Where do you see the upside in Q1? Where do you see the downside? And how does the emerging retail investor that has so much equity in their home, maybe more money in their savings, how do they play a part? Yeah, look, look, would I be surprised to see some kind of pullback in the first part of the year? Possibly. But that's not really where we're focused. Where we're focused is, you know, as we've said for a long time, this economy exited recession this year and, and it's in recovery now. And we think that that's going to be a multi-year recovery for the economy. And we think markets are going to respond. And we think it's those parts of the market that are difficult to buy. Things like dividend payers and value cyclicals and international stocks. We just think that those companies that need economic growth are really going to get it as we roll out vaccines and the economy continues to recover. And that's really where we're focused, not just for the first quarter, but really for, for most of 2021 in our mind. All right. Speaking of vaccines um, and just the whole situation with the pandemic, what macro numbers are you looking at to kind of read the tea leaves? Are you looking at COVID-19 cases, jobless claims, interest rates, bond yields? What should we be looking at to kind of get some insight in at least Q1? I think this was one of the real lessons of, of 2020, that even if you think you know a certain parameter, you might be wrong. For example, if you had told me in March that we would have had six times the number of cases today than, than we did then, uh, that the markets would be at all-time highs, I would, I would have thought you were nuts. I would have sold. Um, so it really hasn't been cases for a while. I, I think you know the numbers that are going to be key next year are things like retail sales and restaurant bookings and uh, open table reservations and Uber rides, just signs that we're getting back to normal, that we're emerging from lockdown. I mean, I think we're, we're confident that those are going to improve as, um, you know, as the vaccines are rolled out. But I think those are the kind of metrics, those non-traditional measures of consumer activity that are going to be key next year. All right. So you're, you're saying some words that are, are I think, are kind of uh, hitting a key point here. Signs that things are getting back to normal. So we've seen incredible yeah. gains on the stock market this year. That's probably not normal considering some of the things that we're experiencing. Where do you see the broader market, the S&P, going this year? Do you have a price target for it? For 2021? Yeah. Yes. We, we, we've got it going to, to, to uh, 40. I'm sorry, to 4,500. Um, we think that you've got significant upside on the market next year uh, because, yeah, look, investors have gotten themselves to the point where they're excited that, you know, 2021 hopefully won't be the dumpster fire that 2020 was. I, I don't think what we've priced in, though, is that economic expansions don't last, you know, months and, and weeks. They last quarters and years. And that we have a multi-year runway here where we think that the S&P will ultimately get above 5,000 before the Fed even considers raising rates the next time. And so 4,500 is, you know, the number for next year that's you know, 15, 16 percent. We've averaged, you know, roughly 12 percent a year since the Great Recession, and we think it's just, you know, a little bit better than average year next year. So you're saying a little bit better than average year next year, but there's a lot of uncertainty. Yep. The question is, you know, will the vaccines proliferate? Will we get a second round of stimulus? Um, two big question mm -hmm. marks right there. But when you look at just Q1, do you see these gains continuing? Um, we, we saw, you know, Apple and Amazon actually fall after the stimulus checks. Some confusing signs there. What do you see just in Q1? I think that makes sense that those names fell, because you have to remember it's about incremental news flow. If you go back to the first quarter of last year, for example, the only place you could do business was Amazon because everything was closed. Now, you know, those companies are still doing well. Um, but when you look at other companies like travel and leisure and entertainment and transportation who were essentially shut down last year, and, you know, even though they're not doing great right now, they're not shut down, the incremental news flow, we think, is in favor of those kind of beaten down parts of the market. So we expect that they'll outperform. You know, our view is that, you know, there's there's probably a little bit of uncertainty going into the January 6th Georgia election. But coming out of that, we think it's heads we win, you know, tails we win. In other words, either we're going to get a Republican hold of Congress and there's going to be some comfort around split government or there's going to be a Democratic victory and then we'll be pricing in larger stimulus. Either way, we think that the market will get a little bit more certainty. And we think Q1 can, can be a good start to the year, quite frankly. All right. Final thought here. You just touched on the D.C. impact on the markets. Uh, mm -hmm. President Biden's coming in and potentially Janet Yellen. Just really quick. What's your take on that? I, I think you're going to see the continuation of easy monetary and fiscal policy, a desire to support the economy in the early stages of this recovery. I think tax changes are likely to be delayed if they occur at all. Uh, and so, frankly, we think that, you know, hopefully the setup for politics in 2021 is one of a little bit of quiet. It's dangerous right. to say, given Washington, but that's oh. the hope. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.